What is going on guys? Sean Donna is coming back at you this week for Throws University, dropping knowledge bombs on you this week about how to wind the hammer efficiently, effectively, how to do it uh, what I would call right. You don't have to listen to me, but it'd probably help. So, as the old adage goes, how you start is how you finish. So if you finish good, that means you started good, and if you start good, that means you're probably gonna finish good. Right, everything in the throw is a chain reaction, and if you don't start that chain off right, you're not gonna finish it right. So, keep that in mind. If I don't do my winds and my entry correctly, then there's about a 3% shot that I'm gonna finish the throw uh, the way that I want. If I do something wrong in my winds and my entry, usually I find that out by about turn two or three, and from there there's really no saving it because the object in motion stays in motion, and whatever happens earlier on in the throw is just gonna get magnified later in the throw. Just a couple of my philosophical thoughts regarding the hammer throw. So starting off, what I think an ideal wind looks like. So as you can see, my weight is distributed nice and evenly, 50-50 left side right side nice and balanced uh, the biggest thing in the winds is without a doubt stability so as you can see my torso my knees uh, my hips all that stuff is relatively stable there's not uh, that much side to side movement of course there's going to be a little bit but that side to side movement is trying to be controlled additionally there's not much flexion or extension going on at the lower back or the upper back at all. Once again, trying to stay more or less upright, very locked in, very stable. Additionally, you can see I'm keeping my hands up at least above belly button height. I try to think about keeping my hands about chest height, but with the way the ball drops, that's about just where it is. So keeping my hands up is another key aspect. You can see my arms outstretched in front of me, nice and long, relaxed, and connected to the ball. The winds and the entry set up your connection to the hammer, and if you are connected to the hammer throughout the entire throw, it's going to be a good throw. And another key point is I'm turning my shoulders back to the right. My eyes and head are turned to the right as well. That way I can turn back and connect with the hammer. That way I can feel the ball run past me during the entry of the throw. Lastly, you can see my left elbow has not come too high over my head or too open around as the ball goes left. That's just what an ideal wind in my ideal wind, it looks like. Moving on, first and foremost, the biggest thing about the winds, once again, is all about setting up connection to the ball. And there's a little kind of theory that I've come up with that uh, the ball has to continually accelerate from start to finish for you to feel that connection throughout the entire of the throw. If the ball doesn't accelerate or you decelerate, same thing, different words, then you will lose connection and you lose connection and you lose feeling and you decelerate more and the throw just kind of goes to shit and you kind of fight your way through it. That being said, it is best to go from slow to fast when thinking about the throw. So obviously you want to start at zero, zero percent, and then throughout the winds you might want to maybe go 50, 60, 70 percent, and then throughout the turns you build up that last uh, 30 percent or so until you get to 100% and you release and hopefully hit a PR throw and throw as far as you are possible at that point in time. The problem I see most people do wrong in the winds is uh, their rhythm of the winds. They start much too fast and they enter too slow. That doesn't mean start fast, enter faster. That means slow down your first wind, relax, feel the ball, chill, let the speed build naturally, let gravity do its thing, let the ball do its thing and then you'll be much more connected and it'll be much easier to throw farther. So here's another video that I got demonstrating this. What's typical in, in, in winds that are too fast is this big preliminary swing. And uh, for most people, especially younger athletes that I coach, they, they still can't quite comprehend that when I say, hey, slow that down, um, they just don't quite get it. And they'll slow down every other part of their wind except for this big preliminary swing because they see all the elite athletes do it and they want to be just like all of them. All right, you don't need a big preliminary swing. Go nice and slow, go nice and easy. Once again, feel it, relax the arms. So what I think about in the winds, once again, is a slow first wind, a slow, easy first wind, big, big first wind, and then a, a strong second wind. So it's not necessarily fast, but it's faster than the previous wind. And then I try to accelerate, try to keep the ball accelerating for the entirety of that second wind through the entry. That way I can set up the ball nice and easy and get a good connection. Another big fault that people make when winding the hammer, and this one's pretty straightforward, is just very tight arms, very uh, close to the body during the winds. You could even call it like a lasso sort of effect, or just, if anything, they're just afraid to let the ball go and stretch it outwards away from them. Another key point of my winds is I try to make the winds, I'm trying to make the orbit as big as possible. That way, it is more similar to the throw itself. The more similar the winds are to the throw, the easier it'll be to maintain connection from out of the winds through the entry into the actual turns themselves. The more different your winds are from the throw itself, the harder it'll be to connect off of the winds. And once again, this is why going so fast is bad and why having tight arms is bad. 
because it just really masks connection and feeling and it makes it hard to feel the ball. If you can't feel the ball, you're not gonna throw the ball very far. One last final fault, and this is probably my biggest pet peeve. I don't know where people pick this up from. I don't know why people do it, but it bothers me. And that is a very high accentuated open left elbow in the winds. The more my left side opens up in the winds and the higher this elbow comes over my head, the harder it is for me to turn my shoulders back and connect with the hammer early. You don't see many elite athletes winding that aggressively with that left elbow coming very high. Instead, rather, that uh, that left elbow kind of comes across the face or the, 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 the forearm kind of comes across the face rather than the, uh, the bicep. So, how do you fix that? Don't let that elbow come so high. Bring that elbow across the body rather than up over the head. So that's all I got about, about lines. Like I said, set up that stability, set up connection, find that tension, that passive tension, not the active tension. You don't want tight active arms, you want passive, long, relaxed arms, and you want to feel the tension of the ball pulling on you. All right, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. Sean Donna Throws University. Peace and out. Let me know if you have any questions down below in the comments, and go sign up for a technical analysis. Go to the website, throwsuniversity.com, and sign up, and let's work together and help you set some PRs. All right, peace out.